What's good, y'all? It's your guy Ben Do, and um, I'm back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry for being gone for so long. I think it's been like a week or two, something like that. Um, yeah, I had like a triple whammy, you know, guys. I was sick. I thought I had COVID, but it turned out to just be a regular cold. And then my tooth was. I have um, wisdom teeth growing in, and. Since we don't have Medicare for all, I can afford to get them pulled out right now. So I have to literally save my money and wait to get them pulled out. Just a trip away me and shit, but I'm feeling better. My teeth still hurt, but, you know, I'm going to tough it out. I'm going to be like Trump. You feel me? I'm a man. Manly man. I ain't no bitch. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, you know, first story I want to get to, you know, coming back is... I definitely want to talk about this GameStop shit, yo. So, I've been watching everybody's videos about it. I've been reading a lot about it, and it's beautiful. At the end of the day, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful in a way of that random guy that was in the Capitol that was sitting at Pelosi's desk with her with his feet up on her fucking desk. Like this guy, she will probably like, you know, condemn as a fucking deplorable, or deplorable, or, damn, deplorable. I can't say deplorable, deplorable or some shit. It's like in her office with his feet on her desk, like, fuck you, you old wrinkly bitch. Like, beautiful. That's the type of beautiful this GameStop situation is. But it, it to me, it goes even deeper because it addresses, it's kind of like forced to vote in a sense. Like, it's showing the unmasking. And that's what 2020 was, in my opinion. That's what um, a lot of these events that have been happening, like just COVID itself altogether has been the great unmasking, showing you how bullshit the system is, showing you how corrupt the, the system is, and definitely something like the stock market and how, you know, big of a Ponzi scheme it fucking is. Like, you know, so, like literally just telling people like, oh, you own a piece of the stock and shit like that. You're part of it. No, you're, no the fuck you're not. <laughs> like, so it's like. The stock market is something to me that's always been kind of like sketchy, even as I was, you know, I was learning about it to get into it and everything. Like, it, it just always seems so sketchy. Like, it's complicated. They make it so complicated um, because it's sketchy. Like, it's it's a fucking, it's, it's a scam. Like, that, and honestly, that's why I fuck with um, cryptocurrency more. Like, I'm looking to invest in that. You guys should be looking into it as well. Um but, yeah, but just to get into the GameStop story, so you had basically all these Reddit motherfuckers sitting around watching these hedge fund people short the GameStop stock, which, you know, shorting, I'm not going to explain it the best, because, again, I'm not a financial guy, I'm not, like, you know, a Wall Street stock market guy, but basically shorting a stock is, and I'm sorry if I, if I explain it wrong, but I would recommend go going to watch other YouTube videos about it, but this is the Bindu layman's term description of it so from what i've read and watched short selling is when some um somebody comes in they borrow the stock they don't buy it they borrow it and they um they wait for the stock to go down i believe so the price to go down and then they sell it they short sell it that's why it's called shorting they short sell it and keep you know like the profits or whatever some shit like that I, i'm pretty sure i explained it right a bunch of reddit motherfuckers saw like Hedge fund groups like Melvin and group and all, you know, all them motherfuckers, they saw them doing it and said, oh, nah, fuck y'all, fuck y'all, we about to do the opposite of that shit. And basically a whole bunch of people started buying the stock via commuting, communicating with each other on Reddit, buying the stock up and driving the price up. So then the borrowers owed money by the end of it all. Brilliant concept. It was a brilliant thing to do. So... Yeah, that's what happened, and it basically drove the stock up and made these guys owe money. So when they gave when they gave the stock back from the you know gave the stock back to the person they borrowed it from, they ended up owing money on it because it didn't you know they didn't it didn't go the way they wanted it to. Basically, it didn't short you know the stock price didn't go down, it didn't crater. So, and what happens with a lot of that shit is when they're doing shit like that, like a lot of people lose their jobs at these companies and everything, and they don't give a fuck because they're making money at the end of the day. So. All these Reddit people made this money. Like I saw, I was reading through it and everything. I saw like a couple people talking about this. Like this one guy was talking about he paid his mother's like medical bills off. I believe COVID bills off with you know his profits. Um, and no, I heard there were some assholes, some rich assholes that 
made off well, but a lot of regular folk did too. And it was a mixed bag kind of because like I read people that were talking about they were doing it because they're tired of the global elitist and everything. I saw Blumenthal's report on it on a gray zone. And but I just find it fascinating. Like this is a honestly, this is a path of resistance. You gotta you gotta attack these people at their wallets. Like I think it was in Spider Man One when he was like, You have to attack his heart, you know, the Green Goblin scene and everything. But with Wall Street, you have to attack their pockets, their wallets. Take it. <laughs> so um, and that's what these Reddit guys did, but you know, and I see people like Graham Elwood and everything cheering it on, and it's definitely do that. You know, this is something dope, but I feel like we should be looking to do something similar but different at the same time. We should be looking to, in my opinion, and this is like, like I said, this is my opinion, like what everybody and a lot of people's opinions, what people have been saying, direct action strikes, wildcat strikes, like. Dog, literally, if Walmart and Amazon were to go on strike, if if those workers, majority of those workers were to go on strike, bro, it would shut the fucking country down. And that's honestly what we need. So, but this is brilliant too. This is dope. But the story gets even deeper and more complex when basically, so a lot of these people, you know, were doing the trades through Robinhood and other, and, and there's other trading apps that you can use as well. I don't know what they're called, but I have Robinhood on my phone. I was like, when I was going to buy a stock, I was going to do it through Robinhood. Well, Robinhood basically got a call from their parent company, Citadel, and basically said, hey, stop, you know, shut that shit down. Like a lot of our friends are losing money. So um, come to find out that, you know, Robinhood shut it down as ordered. And a lot of the people, the, you know, the people that were trading the stock filed a class action lawsuit against them. So Robinhood's probably finito. They're probably donezo, son. And as they should be, because from what I heard, and Dylan Radigan said this on Jimmy Dore's show, he said the only people that can shut shut a stock down, that can stop trading on a stock, buying and trading on a stock, is the NASDAQ. Which is, again, this is adding to the, you know, the big tech problem that we have, because Robinhood is a big tech company. The fact that they're beholden either to the government or to the richest people in the country who control the government. Because then the deeper part of the story is now, <clears throat> the video I'm about to play now is a C CNBC video, but check it out. I'm just wondering what you would propose if you were a regulator at this point. So, and you mentioned social media and the way these some of these things get started. So you've got a, a and once again, GameStop, GME, I'm, a, it may not be listed uh, with you, but it, you have someone in, on Reddit on this popular site saying, I'm not selling until it gets to at least a thousand, a thousand plus. So we know what the what the underlying business of GameStop is. So how would you describe that? How, what would you suggest is, would be a, a uh, action that, uh, that someone that, uh, a regulator that might think uh, that, that this has gotten out of hand? What, what would you do? What would you suggest happens here? So that's, the, that's CNBC begging for regulation with the NASDAQ CEO there, as, CEO there as well. Like they're begging for regulation when usually they're begging for deregulation. But now that the little guy is bending them over the barrel and showing them the 50 states. Now they want regulation. <laughs> but <clears throat> it goes deeper because now Janet Yellen is getting involved. Who's Janet Yellen? Janet Yellen is um, Joe Biden's pick for Secretary of, of the Treasury. Now, she should recuse herself, and people are calling for her to recuse herself. Why? Because she took $810,000 from Citadel to give speeches. And let's just be quite frank. Speech. She's getting paid because they know she's going. She's going to go back into government in some form or fashion, and that's their ace in the hole, basically. And let's be real. You know, I'm about to defend a lot of people here. I don't give a shit. You guys know I like to joke around on here. Who wants to hear a woman talk? Much less pay to hear a woman talk. <laughs> Say like, nah, yeah, I'm fucking with y'all. But for real though, like, like they pay Hillary to give, like. Dog, literally, if, like most husbands don't want to hear their wife talk, much less pay. They hear their wife talk. They literally pay. Like they take their wife out to go shopping to get them to stop talking. <laughs> like who was they? Like I bet Bill was like, look, go talk to those people get paid for it. Get the fuck out of my face. But people like Hillary Clinton, Janet Yellen, who wants to hear them talk? And much less pay to hear them talk. Oh, they want to hear them talk because they're going to do favors for them when they get back in fucking government. That's why they want to hear them talk. <laughs> that's why they want to hear a woman talk 
I know a lot of females and listen, they just got pissed off. I don't give a shit though. Y'all know I'll be bullshitting on here. I'll be fucking around, but um But yeah, back to the series. No, serious Caleb. Serious Bindu. Back. Um Yeah, Janet Yellen took eight hundred and ten thousand dollars for speeches from Citadel. So more than likely, we're probably going to get regulation because of this. Joe Biden even said um, it was, a, I think, one of his um, press people were talking about he's keeping an eye on the situation. You know, instead of getting out those $2,000 checks, he's keeping a fucking eye on, you know, on Wall Street guys getting fucked over, his donors getting fucked over. But then on top of it, it's like you have the, I think this is the um, press secretary, the White House press secretary. Like, just not even, like, ignoring the whole thing about her recusing herself. And it's like, the reporters didn't push her. This wasn't like Trump. You feel me? They didn't push her like they were pushing Trump's um, press secretary. By the way, Trump's press secretary, the last one, the last female one, dog, star, star, prime white woman. She actually looked good. I ain't going to fraud. Trump, good job, bro. But she was dumb as a doorknob, but, (laughs) but, um, yeah, but they didn't push her like they pushed Trump. About this woman recusing herself after taking damn near a million dollars from this company. Yeah, I had a follow up on the on the markets and everything that's mm-hmm. happening with GameStop. Uh, you did mention, I believe, yesterday um, that the Treasury Secretary is monitoring the situation and she's kind of uh, on top of it. There have been um, some kind of concerns about her uh, previous engagements with Citadel and speaking fees that she has received from Citadel. Are there any plans to have her recuse herself from advising the president on uh, GameStop and the whole Robin Hood situation? Well, just to be clear, what I said was that we have the Treasury Secretary is now confirmed. Obviously, we have a broad economic team. Uh, the SEC put out a statement uh, yesterday that I referred to, but I, I don't think I have anything more for you on it other than to say separate from the GameStop issue, the Secretary of Treasury is one of the world-renowned experts on markets, on the economy. Uh, it would, shouldn't be a surprise to anyone she was uh, paid to uh, give her perspective and advice before she came into office. And they're talking about putting reg- um, re- regulations on regular people for playing for playing by the same rules as the, as the rich people? Fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. And this is this is what I was talking about with Biden. This is exactly what I was talking about. This is we're gonna get a worse Trump in four years. I keep telling y'all we're gonna get a worse Trump because we, we may not get actual Trump because they're doing the whole impeachment shit. So he's probably not gonna be allowed to run in 2024. But this is my this is my thing with Biden. And now as it's coming out, all of these fucking politicians like have stocks. And are manipulating the stock market. Like, again, Dylan Radigan said it perfectly, and I agree with him. It's like, you know, one of the most corrupt aspects of our government and of shit right now is that, like, you have politicians that are allowed to own stocks in the companies they're regulating. (laughs) Like, literally, they own stocks in the companies they're supposed to be, like, crafting policies for and regulating. This is fucking ridiculous. And Nancy Pelosi has stock in Tesla. As you're seeing in the article now, Nancy Pelosi has stock in Tesla that's going to go, the stock is going to go up because of certain policies that Biden is going to put in place for, um, for green, for green electric cars, for electric cars. Like one of the things is removing the cap on the, you know, cap sales, I believe, or something like that. But, um, yeah, so she's going to make money, money off of that. Feinstein, like she failed to disclose and when it disclosed and when I say fail, she probably fucking forgot because the bitch is like on her way out the door and cognitively is not there anymore. Like there was this one video where she asked um, Jack Dorsey the same question like three times. And Jack Dorsey's like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you, bro? <laughs> like I just answered that twice and I'm answering it a third time again. Question. And I'm not sure uh, actually what the answer to this should be. But on November 7, President Trump tweeted and I quote, I won this election by a lot, end quote. Obviously, that's not true. President Trump lost the election. The warning label that Twitter has applied to the tweet says, and I quote, official sources may not have called the race when this was tweeted, end quote. Do you believe that label goes far enough to prevent the tweet's harms when the tweet is still visible and not accurate? I do because it's not just the surface level label. It points to a collection 
of news articles of information and conversation that gives you an expansion on what's happening with you. Well, let me give you a specific. On November 7, President Trump tweeted this. I won this election by a lot. And quote, that's obviously not true. President Trump lost the election. The warning label that Twitter has applied to the tweet says, and I quote, official sources may not have called the race when this was tweeted, end quote. Now, here's the question. Does that label do enough to prevent the tweet's harms when the tweet is still visible and is not accurate? I believe it's really important that we show people a broader context, and that is the intention of the label. And then, like, there was another one where, like, apparently, so Democrats were pissed off about how she basically, like, became, like, girlfriends with, you know, with uh, with some, um the judge Trump appointed, Amy Coney Barrett, that's her name. Yeah, she was, like, being nice with, go, being nice to her, like, with kid gloves. And I think she hugged um Lindsey Graham or some shit. <laughs> like, yo, just on some weird shit. Like, and Lindsey, Lindsey Graham was like, oh, okay, all right, this is nice. But, um... Yeah, she failed to disclose, more like forgot, but either way. It was like, oh, I'll just pay the fine. Uh, bitch, no, you're corrupt. No, you go to jail. <laughs> like, that's bullshit. Obviously, we know, you know, um, Lawler and, per and Purdue were one of the um, people in Congress that got caught insider trading, which is, to me, there shouldn't have even been any runoffs. There should have been no, you know, there should have been no election if they're running because they should be in jail. They should be in prison. But, you know, if they were to put them in prison, they would have to put damn near all of the Congress in prison, including AOC, including the squad, because as I revealed, and until somebody um, shows me credible evidence otherwise, they take money from these corporate assholes too. Now, it's different than them holding stocks, you know, obviously, but they should still be put in. If you're taking money from these corporate people, like AOC is taking money from Google, Apple, um, what was the other company? Amazon. And then, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of ironic. It's, it's ironic and convenient that as you're taking money from them, you repeat their talking points when it comes to censorship and other things. But, you know, and you run on this whole thing, like we don't take corporate money when clearly you do. It's like, all right, you're full of shit. <laughs> but this is the, this is the current like lane that we live in this is the world we live in like where our politicians are openly corrupt and it's like we've known this for generations our parents knew this and their parents knew this kind of but it's like nobody seems to want to do anything about it people still want to argue about you know donald trump's an asshole or joe biden's the savior of everything it's like these people are corrupt whether it's donald trump whether it's joe biden whether it's mitch mcconnell whether it's nancy pelosi no, whoever, they're all fucking, fucking corrupt. And that's the thing, like, we get caught up arguing, like, who's more corrupt? When it's like, they all are. <laughs> the fact that fucking Barack, like, they talk about Donald Trump being corrupt. The fact that one of the, the first thing Barack Obama does in public life is give speeches at Wall Street. And he got, like, paid, like, almost a million dollars for that shit. Like, come on, dog. After you bail them out, you basically give them all the money and shaft at the working class. It's fucking ridiculous, man. So this GameStop story is fascinating. Um, if there's any more like big updates, I'm going to you know follow it. I think they were doing it with AMC as well. I don't know how that's going, given that you know Robinhood shut down the AMC stock from being bought and traded as well. But um, or no, they they stopped it from being sold. I think they can't sell it, but. Either way, you you shouldn't be allowed to do that. Only the Nasdaq's allowed to do that. But um, it's a fascinating story. It's revealing, you know, it's revealing that this is class warfare we're in right now. Like, and I know a lot of you probably are going to get pissed off at me about this, but I I genuinely I do believe class is the issue. I believe class is the root of all the problems that we have. Whether it extends into like you know social racial issues, whether it's the environment, whatever it is, I think it's a class struggle. It's a clash class issue and you know i guess that's it that's what it is like i believe it's a class issue that we're dealing with and it's like coronavirus has exposed that this GameStop situation is exposing that and you know it's going to be more things to expose that maybe hopefully more people will wake up you know 
But it's it's a lot of distractions going on, whether it's, you know, good distractions, like whether, you know, whatever it is, people are people are distracted that's preventing them from waking up about certain shit. But um yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the video out there. I'm at about seventeen minutes, twenty minutes, something like that now. So uh yeah, guys, I'm back. I'm going to try and keep up with things. I'm still feeling a little bit under the weather, as you can probably hear in my voice, but fuck it. You know, got to keep it rolling. Um, yeah, I want to have more videos coming soon. And thanks for tuning in. Peace.